man i keep trying to tell people man edc got y'all but people don't want to hear me they don't, don't want to listen they don't like, oh edc ain't doing all oh, edc sleeping all oh, edc taking today off all oh, edc got pto no, no let that man do his thing it's coming man it's happening it's on the way just chill and i know we as ravens fans we are so impatient we want everything to be handled in the first Two and a half days of free agency. We want the whole team, the whole roster, the whole depth chart all sorted out in the first two days of free agency. It takes time, man. And we know this. We know this. Like, y'all know, man, there have been times I've been super frustrated with the way that Ravens be doing things. But, again, I told you, after last year, EDC, you, you, you earned my trust, man. He earned it. So that's why I ain't been tripping out this year, man. I ain't been tripping out over nothing, man. I, I know they got it, man. EDC be reading y'all comments. I'm telling you, I know he does. He be reading y'all comments. He be looking at him like, <laughs> look what that guy said about. Oh, look what she's. Oh, look what he. Oh, watch this. Watch this. And obviously not saying that this move is the end all be all to the offensive line because it's not. But this is a start. Before we get into it, team, keep it clean. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and run them likes all the way up, baby. Let's go. So. Eric DaCosta and the Baltimore Ravens announced out of nowhere. We didn't hear about no visits. I mean, I ain't hear about no visits. I didn't even know that he was in the building. Then all of a sudden, we see a picture. We see a picture of Josh Jones signing the contract, taking a picture at Owens Mills. When did he even get there? Like, see, this is how we know EDC be working when we don't even think or know that he be working. Anyway... So the Baltimore Ravens announced that they have signed veteran tackle Josh Jones. And who is Josh Jones? What is it about Josh Jones? Well, Jeff Reaper gave us a quick breakdown, and I'm going to give you what I heard about him, too. He said, uh, Jones, a third-round pick by Arizona in 2020, has started 24 games over the past three seasons. The 26-year-old was with the Texans last year. Uh, don't think this will impact the team's draft plans along with the offensive line or along the offensive line, but it does add some depth and experience after Ravens lost Morgan Moses, Kevin Zeitler, and John Simpson. Now, um, what I read about him uh, and C too, like you look at 2020. That's the year he got drafted. He was a tackle. Uh, he played tackle that year. 2021, he played right guard. 2022, he played left tackle. And then uh, last year with the Houston Texans, he played tackle. So uh, he's played some left tackle. He's played some right tackle. He's played some guard. So he's somebody that is flexible. He can be used at different positions along the offensive line. Now, one thing that I did read about him is that while he did play some right tackle before too, uh, for the Cardinals, um, he, he's, he was more comfortable as a left tackle. Uh, that's what he played in college. That's what he played uh, with the Cardinals. He was more comfortable as a left tackle. But DJ Humphreys was their guy at left tackle. So they had him. He was straight. He was solid. So then that's, they, they ended up trading him to uh, – trading Josh Jones to the Houston Texans uh, because, again, they – they didn't have any use for him then because they had their guy at left tackle already. Now, the Baltimore Ravens have their guy at left tackle already. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, they'll they, they work it out, though. But, again, depth, depth, depth. I, I, there have been countless amount of times when the Baltimore Ravens, they have signed a player, um, whether early in free agency, whether later, but a lot of times later, they've signed a player, and I've thought, okay, well, that player is just going to be here for debt purposes. They're not going to end up being a starter. I thought that about John Simpson last year. I did not think that he was going to end up being a Baltimore Ravens starter. I remember when they signed John Simpson, and I had continued to say, oh, I, I don't think their starting left guard is even on the roster yet. And boy, was I wrong. <laughs> boy, hey, he, he got the job. He earned it, huh? Um, and, now, and now he cashed out. Cashed out with the New York Jets with it. So uh, with Josh Jones, uh, you just hope that it's not necessarily a similar thing, but you hope that he can have the potential uh, to be a starter because he has starting experience. He has plenty of starting experience. Like Jeff Zrebic highlighted, he started uh, 24 games uh, over the past couple of years. And that's what you want. That, that's what you need. Um, you, you want people who have starting experience because – 
you want somebody to be essentially plug and play. Now, something else that I did read about him that bodes well for the Baltimore Ravens, if he does, if he is going to be uh, a star, well, whether he's a starter or not, because as we've seen plenty of times, the backups, they play offensive line too. They get their playing time in too. So one thing that I did read about him, though, is that he can move. He can move. He is an athletic offensive lineman. So that helps with pulling. When you got to run from one side of the offensive line all the way to the other, that helps with blocking. Because obviously an offensive lineman, they are a wall. They're a protector for the quarterback. But if you got athletic offensive linemen, because I know that has been something that's been brought up for a, a long time uh, amongst Ravens fans, and, and it's a, uh, a serious concern. It's a very, very good point. Uh, is the, the the type of offensive line that the Baltimore Ravens have? A lot of people talked about how the Baltimore Ravens, their offensive line, uh, they are and have been built to run, to run block. They've been a good run blocking offensive line, but as far as pass protection. It just hasn't been there. They haven't been really built for that. So them getting more athletic on the offensive line, this could help them a lot. Now, Linda Flinder, now that boy athletic, now that boy, that boy is strong. That boy can move. Hey, he can move some people, can't he? And even Ronnie Stanley, like when Ronnie Stanley is healthy, hey, that boy can move too. I ain't never going to forget. Ronnie, I know y'all know the play I'm talking about. I don't remember which game it was, but I know y'all know the play I'm talking about. Um, well, Ronnie Stanley, maybe I think maybe Lamar took off or somebody was running down the sideline. I want to say it was Lamar. And you saw a big 79 running like this, charging down the sideline. I said, okay, Ronnie, let's go. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I know somebody will. But, um, yeah, man, this is, this is cool, man. This, this, this is cool. And, again, it goes to show that as a general manager, your job is literally never done, ever. Your job is never done. Because like we continue to say, when it comes to free agency, free agency starts in the middle of March. Yeah, that's when it starts. But free agency never ends. It never ends. It is never over. You never stop signing people. Through the off season. you never stop signing people. During the season, you never stop signing people. You can even sign people in the playoffs. You are never done constructing your team because when you construct your team, you're going to have it. Even when you get you go to a 90-man roster, then you got to cut it down to a 53-man roster, then you got the practice squad, then you got injuries that unfortunately happen. You may have a suspension or two. Uh, you may have somebody requesting a trade. You may have this player disgruntled. This player wants a contract. This player wants a deal. This player wants to be cut and released to go somewhere you always got something that you got to deal with. Always. So life as a GM, ooh. <laughs> I know them checks be nice. Ooh, I know them checks are nice. Ooh, I know them checks are nice. But that's a tough job, my friends. That's a tough, 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 tough job. So shout out to um, Eric DaCosta, man. Eric DaCosta, I got your back. You know that already. Because, again, look. Look. He done proved it last, last year was enough for me. <laughs> because last year, Eric DaCosta, he built a team that was good enough to win the Super Bowl. That team was great enough to win the Super Bowl. They should have won the Super Bowl. Anyway, he did, he did what he had to do on his end. He did everything he had to do and more on his end to give the Ravens a team that was good enough to win the Super Bowl. So that's why he has my trust. I trust Eric DaCosta. I really do. And I'm I'm gonna continue to defend him. Now, if he do something like some silly, then I'm uh, I'll let you know. I'm saying that at 83, that's a that's a little silly. I don't know about that one, but so far it ain't been no silly stuff. I, and I know that um with the offensive line, I know a lot of people have been questioning, like, what's going on with it? Uh, what's what's Eric DaCosta going to do? What's going to happen? What, how is he going to address it? And, and I get that because it is a major concern, like we've continued to talk about. It really is because you want to know how Eric DaCosta is going to put these guys in place to protect Lamar Jackson. How? Who's it going to be? All right, Ronnie Stanley is going to be at the left tackle. Tyler Linderbaum is going to be at center. Who's going to be a left guard? Who's going to be a right guard? Who's going to be a right tackle? Who's it going to be? 
And we talked about the possibilities and the prospects of Andrew Voorhees. We talked about the possibilities and the prospects of Daniel Filele. We've talked about the possibilities and the prospects of Ben Cleveland. And those are options. But now you add Josh Jones to the mix. All right, cool. There is still more to be added to the mix. There's still more bodies that are going to be there. There's going to be draft picks. There's going to be more free agents. It's going to be more people on the added to that offensive line. I personally do not think the offensive line is set. I know you personally don't think the offensive line is set. And I really don't think Eric DaCosta thinks the offensive line is set. Why? Because it's not set. We just, free agency been here for a little over a week. Because remember, it officially started on Wednesday, the legal tampering period. But anyway, it officially started Wednesday. This is Thursday the next week. So we in, we one week into free agency. Literally one week. And people have been tripping out like crazy. For what? Why? Why are you driving yourself crazy one week into free agency? Like the roster's supposed to be done by now. No, it's not. It's not. But again, this is a start. You like think about this because I know I know people been going crazy about the offensive line and I get it I get it because it's not only about Lamar Jackson think about this why would the Baltimore think about it why would the Baltimore Ravens pay Lamar Jackson all that money but then get this then the very next year why would they pay Derrick Henry all that money and then be like you know what offensive line we ain't worried about that let's have a garbage offensive line let's get rid of everybody and we're not going to retool we're not going to reload we're not going to restock wow think about that why would they do that you got Lamar Jackson signed to a bunch of money you don't want that investment to go to waste you got Derrick Henry signed to some significant money you don't want that investment to go to waste. why so of course they're going to fix the offensive line of course we just got to wait it out. That's it. We just got to wait it out. So let's see how this goes. Let's see what other under the radar signings EDC got for us. We know the visit. Like everybody was so focused on the visit with Michael Gallup today. It's like, okay, what's going to go happen with Michael Gallup? Well, I was reading the comment sections. I was just like, ooh, 14, keep it clean. Boy, y'all, boy, y'all don't hold back. I appreciate it, though. Y'all don't hold back and let, let everybody know how y'all feel about whatever. I love it, though. I love it because y'all do it with respect, so I appreciate that. There's some people like, oh, hey, Michael Gallup will be cool. There's some people like, oh, no, I don't want no Michael Gallup. So I get it, man. But um, EDC is working. Baltimore Ravens are working. Now let's just see how stuff works out.